Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, this is sort of a follow-up. My last video I was talking about G-Predict and using it to control the frequency of your radio to compensate for Doppler shift while trying to work a satellite. Well, I have, as you know, an ICOM 705, which is a fantastic little radio. I love it. But I was running into a problem uh, with trying to work satellites that have a PL tone. One really popular one that you might be familiar with is the ISS, which requires a 67 hertz tone, PL tone, in order to open the uh, repeater. Let me show you what's going on with the uh, little ICOM 705 when you try to use a tone. So here's my 705, and I'm going to go in here to function, and you can see tone is off. I'm going to turn it on. And now here you can see on the display right there, tone. So it's telling us that PL tone is turned on. But if I change the frequency, I'm just going to rotate the VFO. Did you see that? Now tone is off. If I turn it back on. There you can see tone on the display, but as soon as I change the frequency, it goes off. As soon as you manually change the frequency, or if remote software is changing the frequency, the tone turns off. This is my Yezu FT817, and there's tone right there. If I turn that on, you can see the, the let me scratch up a bit. You can see the little T indicator right there to tell me the tone is on. Tone squelch, DCS, none. So I'll turn it for tone, tone is on. If I change the frequency, I can change the frequency, tone stays on. It does not turn off. This is how most radios that I've owned perform. So yeah, that's kind of a problem. As G-Predict is changing the frequency of the radio to follow Doppler shift, every time it changes the frequency, it turns the tone off. There's no way to keep it on. So I entered a support ticket with ICOM support asking about this. And this is the response I got back from Greg P, ICOM America Technical Support. Hi, unfortunately that is how ICOM radios function. Whether you are in VFO or memory channel mode, if there is a tone set and you change the frequency, the tone will be disabled. Radios like the 9100 and 9700, which have a dedicated satellite mode, can perform this type of operation when in sat mode and not lose the tone functionality. So apparently, that's by design. I asked Greg to please forward this issue on to ICOM's engineering department for their consideration. Uh, because if you're trying to track a satellite, and it's, it's whether you're using automatic frequency control or if you're trying to do it manually, um, it's going to turn off the tone every time. And, and <laughs> how are you supposed to work a, a satellite with a PL tone? I guess you just need to upsell. There's an upsell, you know. I guess you just need to buy the more expensive radio, huh? <laughs> uh, anyway, um, there is a fix. It all is not lost. There is a fix. I'll try to find it again and show you, but over on the Hamlib um, developers forum, I ran across a conversation with somebody else inquiring about this, and one of the developers added a function into Hamlib. Uh, to solve this problem. So what does this do? This gives you an extra setting that you can put in with rig control D, rig control daemon, uh, called set tone equal true or on. Uh, I'll show it to you here. Um, and what that does is every time it changes the frequency on the radio, it turns the tone back on. So the tone might go off for just a fraction of a second and come back on. So it's kind of a kludge um, but it does seem to work. Here, let me show you a demo. Now, as you can see, the tone is on, and it's going to change frequency. There, did you see the tone flicker? Let me pick a satellite that's going to change the frequency a little more often here. Okay, 
I'm tracking a different satellite now. It's going to change the frequency a little more often, but watch. You'll see, you'll see the frequency change, and you'll see tone flicker. See it? So every time it changes the frequency now, it's turning the tone back on so we can work the satellites. Now, this fix is only in... Well, I, I don't know what version of Hamlib was current when the developer introduced the fix. He doesn't say in uh, his posting. If I can figure that out, I'll put it on the screen here. Uh, but I do know that Debian 12, which is the latest stable Debian, which is what I'm running, has uh, an older version, 4.5.2 or something like that. Um, actually, 4.45? I don't know. I'll look it up and I'll put that up on the screen too. Uh, and that version does not have that fix. If I try to use that option, it just errors out with illegal option. So what you need to do in order to fix this is download and compile the latest Hamlib if you have this issue. Now, don't get scared. It's not that hard. We're going to walk through how you would download and compile the latest version of Hamlib to give yourself this option to fix the tone. This is the GitHub page for Hamlib github.com slash hamlib slash hamlib and when we go here here is all the source code and what we're going to do is go to this green code button here and download zip that's going to download the whole thing into a zip file in your downloads directory then we'll go and extract that so here I have the downloaded zip file I'm going to right click on it and select extract here and that creates this folder hamlib master and inside here is all the code. Now before we can compile this, you're going to need some basic uh, build files on your Linux installation. I'm going to go to Synaptic Package Manager. And here in Synaptic Package Manager, I'm going to search for build-essential. There it is. This is one package you need to install, Build Essential. That will get you most of the files that you need to be able to compile software. So select that one and mark for installation. I've already got it installed, obviously. And since we're here anyway, we might as well get a couple of other things that you might need for future projects if you're going to build other source code. Search for CMake. And we're going to install CMake. And search for AutoMake. And again, check the box here for installation. And then hit Apply. And this will install the files that you will need to build Hamlib with. Once those files are installed, we can come back here to our Hamlib master folder that we downloaded. In some OS's you can right click here and so there will be an option to open a terminal here. I'm going to go ahead and just open a terminal manually. And I'll show you a little trick here. I want to type CD for change directory. And then I'm going to, back here in my file browser, I'm going to take this Hamlib master folder, hold down on it with the mouse and drag over and release inside that terminal window. And that just inserts the directory path for me, so I can just hit enter, and now I'm in that directory. So the first thing we need to do is we need to run this bootstrap script. This sets the build up for your environment. So dot slash bootstrap. And this is going to go through and check your system and make sure that you have everything that you need. And make a configure script. If there's anything missing, it'll tell you, and then you can go and install it from Synaptic. But now that we've done that, I can run configure. Dot slash configure. That builds the make file for your system. Again, it checks to make sure you've got everything that it needs. And when it's done, now we can start the build, and it's simply type make. And this will take a while. Go get a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, maybe a couple of cookies, and we'll come back to this when it's done. Now that it's finished compiling, we had one error here, but this is okay. Don't worry about that. 
Um, now that it's done compiling, <clears throat> we're going to install it. And you do that with sudo, which means super user do, or we're going to do this command as the administrator of the system, make space install. It'll ask you for your password, and it will install it. And we're done. We now have the latest version of Hamlib with the fix for the tone issue. This is a little script that I use to automatically launch gpredict and start rig control daemon to talk to my icom. And this is the command right here, rig control d, rig ctl d, dash m is the radio type, and in Hamlib 3085 is my icom 705. Dash R is the serial port device that the radio is connected with. And in the case of the ICOM, it's slash dev slash TTY capital ACM zero. And here is the new option that we add. Dash dash set dash conf equal tone underscore enable equal one. So pause the video and write that down. But you just add this to the end of the command that launches rig control D. And what this will do now is every time it changes the frequency on the radio, it will turn the tone back on. So there you go. If you are trying to work satellites uh, with an ICOM radio and you can't get the tone to stay on, uh, and you're using gpredict on Linux, <laughs> if you're on Windows, I, um, I don't know uh, what the fix is. I, I think Hamlib's available for Windows. Maybe it's the same current version. And you'll just have to make sure you're running the most uh, recent version if that's what you're using. I don't know. I don't use Windows. I don't use Mac. I'm on Linux. I hope you found that useful. Um, if I ever hear back from ICOM that they are going to fix this on their radios, if it's even a bug that needs to be fixing, it sounds like that's by design. Maybe they'll change their minds. I don't know. But if I ever hear back from them, I'll do a follow-up video and let you all know that uh, you can upgrade your firmware on the ICOMs if that comes to pass. So anyway, I hope you found that useful, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.